This video introduces the viscoelastic model for analyzing cure-induced stress in composites and demonstrates how to implement it in a Bacchus using the UMAT subroutine. Stay tuned. Curing of composites is a well-known phenomenon widely studied in various industries. Due to the sensitivity and importance of this topic, as well as the complexities involved in conducting experiments, the use of numerical methods for analyzing composite curing and the residual stresses induced by curing has become increasingly popular in recent years. Abacus is one of the most commonly used software tools for this purpose and has demonstrated significant capability. To achieve this, you need to use several Abacus subroutines simultaneously, such as DIS, UXPAN, HeatVal, USDFLD, and UMAT. In a previous video, linked above, we discussed this topic. However, the model used to analyze the mechanical field in that case was a linear elastic hardening model. Additionally, we have an intermediate package that thoroughly discusses the curing phenomenon and how to model it in Abacus, with a focus on linear hardening elastic models. If you're interested, you can also view that package through the link in the description and gain valuable insights into composite curing and its simulation using linear hardening chili models in a box. While simple, this model lacks accuracy because the behavior of resin during curing is viscoelastic, not linear elastic hardening. In this video, we will explore the equations used in the viscoelastic model for composite curing and demonstrate how to use them to analyze cure-induced stress in Abacus with the UMAT subroutine. Additionally, if you're interested in gaining more information in this field, we also have an advanced composite curing simulation package based on the viscoelastic model, which you can view through the link in the description. We discuss the composite curing phenomenon, the relationships derived from the viscoelastic model for analysis, and how to implement this model in Abacus using Fortran subroutines. Furthermore, we have prepared two workshops to help you gain a deeper understanding of the topic, providing a step-by-step -step explanation of the modeling and verification process with reference articles. Next, let's go through the step-by-step -step procedure of modeling composites in a box for the simulation of the curing process. As for modeling, I should mention that there is no difference in the modeling process within Abacus when using linear elastic and viscoelastic models. The main difference lies in how the UMAT subroutine is written, which differs between the two models. You can check out the key points in the modeling process for this file in our previous YouTube video linked above and proceed with the modeling. The only difference here is that we've added some of the constants required for the viscoelastic model, including weighting factors and relaxation times as mechanical constants to the material, which can be seen in the figure. Later, these values are called within the UMAT code. The reason for this is that if the type of your composite is different and you want to change these components, there's no need to modify the code. In the next step, we've increased the number of state variables because more state variables are used in the viscoelastic model. With just these two changes, you can modify only the UMAT subroutine and use the same Abacus model introduced in the previous video for analyzing problems using the viscoelastic model. Additionally, as you can see for validation, we first check the stress component and then the DEBRA number against available references, observing a good agreement between the results. If you'd like to learn more about other data used in the simulation and get further details on this topic, you can refer to the link in the video description. I hope you found it helpful so far. To make things easier for you, we've uploaded the INP file for this model to our GitHub page.
The link is provided in the description. Download it and access the model we've explained here. Okay, now it's time to first discuss what the viscoelastic formulation for curing analysis is and why it's used, and then talk about how to code the subroutine to use the viscoelastic model and perform the curing analysis in Abaquis. Please note that for this project, multiple subroutines have been used, including DISP, USDFLD, UXPAN, CheapVal, and UMAT. However, except for UMAT, the other subroutines are used as explained in the first video and the description, without any modifications. Therefore, in the following, we will only discuss the viscoelastic formulation and how to use it in Abacus with the help of the UMAT subroutine. Okay, let us explore the resin's behavior during the curing process. In such cases, resin undergoes several consecutive stages. Initially, it is in a fully relaxed state, exhibiting viscous behavior. As curing progresses, the resin's viscosity gradually increases, and after passing through the gel point, its behavior shifts from viscous to viscoelastic. The gel point is equivalent to infinite viscosity in the resin, after which an infinite molecular network forms in the material. In this state, the stresses developed in the material dissipate rapidly. At this stage, the resin's equilibrium modulus gradually increases. Viscoelastic relaxation time is an important concept in the behavior of viscoelastic materials, as it simultaneously reflects both elastic and viscous properties. This concept specifies the time required for the material to recover from deformation under constant stress or strain. As the degree of curing progresses, the resin's behavior transitions from viscoelastic to elastic. In this state, the rate of stress relaxation decreases. When the glass transition occurs, the relaxation times suddenly increase and the material's behavior becomes entirely elastic. It is important to note that the term glass transition refers to the state where a polymer transitions from a viscoelastic rubbery solid to a glassy elastic solid. The temperature at which this transition occurs is known as the glass transition temperature. The full resin status is reported in the figure. As shown, first in region 1, the resin is in the viscous state and cannot bear shear loads. In region 2, the resin is viscoelastic, so the stresses will be released very quickly. In stage 3, the behavior is elastic. In the following, we will review the formulations developed to capture the resin behavior during the curing process, considering its viscoelastic behavior. In nearly all existing studies, integral equations are employed to describe the fundamental governing equations of resin behavior, accounting for its viscoelastic properties during curing. One of the most prominent models for describing residual stress relaxation during curing is the viscoelastic curing model. In this model, equation 1 describes stress as a function of mechanical strain over time, assuming a simple thermorheological material at a given degree of cure and considering the absence of strain before time. Equation 1 is rewritten in the form of equation 3 using the time temperature superposition principle. According to this principle, the total response generated at a specific location and time in a linear system due to two or more stimuli equals the sum of responses caused by each stimulus individually. It is worth noting that the above equation applies exclusively to simple thermorheological materials. Rheology, a field introduced by American physicist Bingham in 1920, broadly focuses on the flow and deformation of materials under external forces. More specifically, it investigates the governing relationship between deformation and stress over time, considering various influencing factors. Thermorheological materials are a class of substances whose viscoelastic behavior demonstrates a specific and predictable relationship between temperature and time-dependent deformation properties. To discretize the equation, the stiffness matrix at the reference temperature is approximated using the Prony series as shown in equation 5. Substituting equation 5 into equation 3, the fundamental equation based on the viscoelastic model is rewritten as equation 6. A recursive algorithm is used to solve equation 6. The recursive algorithm is a programming technique where a function calls itself. This approach divides the problem into smaller subproblems, which are then solved recursively. For the composite under consideration, the fully relaxed stiffness is approximately equal to one-seventh of unrelaxed stiffness. Moreover, the discrete stiffness is calculated using equation 12. The weighting coefficients and their corresponding relaxation times for the AS4-3501-6 composite 
were determined by Kim and White through curve fitting of experimental data. These values are presented as follows. Moreover, the weighting coefficients and the corresponding relaxation times for the commercial composite AS43516 at the reference temperature and degree of cure are reported in the following figure. We have defined them in abacus in the form of mechanical constants. Finally, the shift factor, AT, for the AR35166 composite is expressed in equation 16. At this point, I believe you've gained a good understanding of the formulation of the viscoelastic model. If you need more detailed information on this topic, please refer to the description and follow the relevant link. Next, we'll proceed to explore how to develop the UMAC code for implementing the viscoelastic model. To achieve this, a flowchart illustrating the procedure for defining the model in the Fortran code is provided in the next figure. According to the flowchart, we first need to write the subroutine header, which we have copied from the Abacus documentation. Then we define the material properties and extract the degree of cure from the state variables. Afterward, parameters such as the shift factor are calculated, followed by the calculation of A1 and A2. Finally, we update Q, and calculate the stress and stiffness components. This was just a brief overview, but let's explore it line by line in the code. First, we define the subroutine header, as shown in the figure, which was copied from the Abacus documentation. Next, we define the parameters required for use in the UMAT subroutine to evaluate residual stresses using real 8 or double precision format. This format occupies 8 bytes of memory to enhance the accuracy of calculations. While we haven't delved into the parameters in detail here, each will be discussed as it is used in the code. Additionally, an integer parameter named countNum is required. The parameters are illustrated in the figure. We then assigned appropriate values to three variables used in the analysis. The first variable, 1, is set to 1 and serves as the constant 1 in the formulas. The second variable, minsec, is set to 60, and is used to convert seconds to minutes in the equations. This is necessary because the unit of time in this analysis is seconds, while many equations are formulated in minutes. The third variable, alpha ref, represents the reference degree of curing, which according to the referenced articles, is set to 0.98. The figure shows how these values are assigned. Next, we define the parameters for the unrelaxed stiffness of the composite. To proceed, we needed to calculate the degree of cure. This value is calculated at the end of the increment and stored in the first state variable. However, we require its mean value at the midpoint of the increment, which can be derived. The rate of increment, stored in the second state variable, is used to calculate the degree of cure at the midpoint using the provided equation. Additionally, we calculated the temperature at the midpoint of the increment. The UMAT variable temp represents the temperature at the beginning of the increment, while the UMAT parameter dtemp represents the temperature variation during the increment. Using these, the mean temperature can be calculated with the provided equation. With these equations, the temperature and the degree of cure were calculated as shown in the figure. Next, the shift factor was evaluated using equation 16, and the relaxation times were calculated using equation 13. Note that props represents the material properties defined in Abacus CAE, as shown in the figure. Specifically, props 1 to 9 are set for the shift factors at the reference degree of cure in accordance with Table 1. We then defined the Jacobian matrix DDSDE, a 6 by 6 matrix required by the UMAT subroutine. This matrix will be used as described in equation 9. Finally, the stress components were calculated using equation 9. This was an overview of the process of writing the UMAT subroutine. For more details and to access the full Fortran file, refer to the link in the description and check out the complete package.